I think you will probably want to know what's the spec of this car. Basically, when I was placing the order for the car, I wanted a car which had a long list of optional extras that were really important to me. But if I ordered a car with all those optional extras, I would have to wait for, they were saying April, May, but no one could give me a guarantee when the car would be delivered. And I spoke to uh, my regular person that I buy cars from. Actually, he's the only decent, nice human being <laughs> in the whole Porsche network of all the salespeople in the UK. He's a really, really lovely guy. So if anyone wants to buy a car and wants good experience, let me know and I'll get you in touch with him because he's just absolutely superb. Actually, one of my viewers got in touch with me on Instagram who was interested in buying a GTS and I did get him in touch with this chap. Basically, if I ordered a car, I would have to wait for almost six months. And by that time, the GTS would be announced and I thought I will probably start regressing ordering a 911 it's like a c4s when a gts will be available but that will come in october november and again that means i have to wait for a whole year and live with the ferrari that i was really unhappy with so the option was to get a car that was already here available or one of those that were ordered by the various dealers as either their demo cars or the cars that they ordered for their stock that would turn up to the UK sooner, but I couldn't change the spec. And there were no C4Ss coming for the next three months. There were some C4s coming. I didn't know if I wanted a 385 brake horsepower car. It just felt so underpowered, even though I'm sure it's not because Porsche delivers power really well. Anyway, so I ended up finding a car that had the spec that I wanted, well, almost, um, so I bought it. I will go through it what it has. So it has exterior electric folding mirrors, which I think is quite useful when you're going to park in tiny car parks in France and in Monaco because their car parks are just insanely small. So the second optional extra in this car that I wanted in my list is the rear axle steering because I noticed that in a short wheelbase car, when you have a rear axle steering, it's just magnificent. It gives you that little extra edge and control over the car. Uh, it has the sports exhaust system in black tailpipes. That's what I wanted. Uh, it has uh, the power steering plus, which is handy when you're in a small town or a car park or because it makes the steering a little lighter because 911 steerings are quite solid and it's nice to have a little bit of a softness from time to time. Then it had the Carrera Classic wheels. Everyone is going for the spider wheels these days and they've been around for so long. They're beautiful, but these ones are the new shape and new style and I quite like them. So I wanted these. I wanted the LED headlights with PDLS. So when you turn the steering wheel, the lights move in the direction of the steering which is quite handy when you're going through country roads and turning at night. Uh, but I didn't want the LED matrix headlights because I have them in the Audi. And yes, they're amazing, they're futuristic and blah, blah, blah. They're great. But for some reason, when I go around to the continent, as in to France or other countries, and driving on the other side, they dazzle the oncoming traffic and there's no option to change it. They say it's supposed to automatically change but I don't think it does or not enough because people always keep flashing at me and it's really annoying. It has the high beam assist, so it will automatically turn on and turn off the high beam, which is fine. That's what the matrix headlights do as well. Um, automatically dimming interior and exterior mirrors is quite important because some people have these awful bright headlights and they come up from behind and dazzle you. Um, they're illegal, but people keep putting them on. Um, light design package. Again, one of the things that I had in my options uh, that I wanted. So the options that I'm going through are the ones that I had in my car and I really wanted. And I'll tell you the ones that this car has that I didn't really care about. 
or want in my list but these are the ones that I wanted um, the light design package is quite nice because it illuminates the inside of the car at night and gives it that little brighter feeling and then when you open the doors there's a light uh, under the rear view mirror that shows you if there's a puddle that you're going to step into at night um, heated steering wheel quite useful when you're traveling in Scandinavia and other countries I mean I do wear gloves from time to time but it's also nice to have the heated steering wheel it just feels so good obviously heated seats so if you don't have the steering wheel then your rest of you is warm and your hands are cold um, Porsche crests on the headrests people want these and I think you should but I don't know why Porsche charge you for it it's a bit like they give you a shell with nothing in it and they say oh this is the price of the car it's not that expensive but by the time you've added something to the car because I think the base price of this car is 108 and by the time you add these extras it becomes 125 so it's a lot of money just for little things like headrests uh, Bose sound system I definitely definitely want um, because the basic system is not bad but it's not powerful enough and when you're on a long journey or somewhere you want to enjoy nice music and good quality and Porsche have worked with Bose to create the acoustics perfectly to work with the Porsches and that's why the quality is really good they have the upgraded Burmeister sound system which I've used a couple of times in the uh, loan cars and in all honesty it's not worth the money it's not as good if it was Bang & Olsen I probably would have opted for that but not that Burmeister this thing has eliminated door guards the sills in carbon fiber it's a waste of money uh, and the same thing it has this carbon fiber all around I wouldn't have chosen this for me it's a waste of money I mean having nothing or these little strips doesn't make any difference it's not like it's adding weight or reducing weight it's not making it look any more sporty than it is it's just a gimmick and a waste of money so the thing that I really wanted uh, in the car which this doesn't have is um, the Porsche InnoDrive the so InnoDrive is the adaptive cruise control c along with the lane assist and uh, the side impact warnings and steering control and everything so I have that in the Audi RS4 and that is just a godsend on the motorways it just takes care of everything for you you drive and it's amazing and the car will go through the like corners and bends it will slow down at roundabouts and accelerate afterwards on its own it reads the speed signs and adjusts the speed accordingly it's very automated and it's really great but unfortunately none of the cars coming into the UK had that option because I think people don't want to spend a couple of thousand pounds on something they don't know about perhaps a lot of other people say oh if you're a Porsche driver you don't need assistance and all that really we're not race car drivers and we're not using these cars for sport purposes only this is an everyday car and as a daily driver if you're doing long journeys it's really convenient so yeah that's the option that's missing in this then I am denied about um, the interior I wanted either a red interior or a light interior or a beige interior I looked at so many options and there was a car that was black with a red interior but because I want to wrap my cars from time to time I thought if I have a specific color then I will have limited options to what I can choose on the outside but if I have a black interior then I can choose pretty much any color on the outside that I want in the end I ended up choosing for black with black if it's your car you should spec it how you like it and enjoy it it's your money you're gonna lose money no matter what when I was buying the Ferrari the guy told me oh you just buy the Ferrari and you drive it for a year or two and you sell it and you never lose any money because they're just so amazing and they hold their value their limited production blah 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 I lost insane amounts of money nearly 40 grand on that car and it's just 
all bullshit. Don't listen to the dealers. They just give you all kinds of crap. Uh, the Ferrari dealer told me that uh, they always want a £20,000 margin in a second-hand car. So whatever you're paying for a Ferrari, just know that it's £20,000 less than what you're paying for it. And you're going to lose that on day one. And Porsche... Porsche dealers, they have a £10,000 margin, so whatever you're paying for, you're going to lose £10,000 on the first day. So all of the spiel that they tell you is pointless. One other option that I forgot to mention is the PASM suspension lowered by one centimeter. It's not really PASM suspension lowered, it's just the suspension is lowered by one centimeter but somehow they've added the word PASM to it which confuses people um, so basically they lower the car by one centimeter and charge you a thousand pounds for it that option I never tick if it's already in the car you can live with it in all honesty it just makes the car suspension unnecessarily stiff because you have the option to make it hard or soft manually but with that it gives you one centimeter less of the the bounce in the car so it makes it a little harder I don't think it makes any difference from the outside if you put the two cars together normal people like you and me we can't tell the difference if the car is lowered by one centimeter they call it 10 millimeters as if that makes it even bigger or more important so yeah basically that's a waste of money don't bother